Hey YouTube, Scarpio here. I was asked by one of my subscribers to make a video on keybinds and interfaces. Now, this subject has been covered by a lot of YouTubers who all say the same thing that I'm gonna tell you. So a lot of new PVMers will look for the ultimate guide to setting up their keybinds. We all ask, what is the most optimized setup to make my life easier when bossing? Unfortunately, the answer across all videos done on keybinds is, there isn't one. I've watched many videos myself and have seen many different setups, keybinds, and interfaces only to find that there isn't one universal set of keybinds that works for everyone and is the best. Instead of ending the video here, I wanted to take the time and show you all the thought process that went into my decisions on my keybinds. Maybe through my process, you can find your own keybinds that work for you. One final note, this process takes a long time and has many revisions. I'm sure I spent a couple months working on my keybinds before settling on what I have today, and even then, it'll still change from time to time as I learn more. The first part I want to cover is the revolution part of the action bar. I know I stated in a previous video that I recommend two ultimates, two to three thresholds, and six to seven basics. If you haven't noticed already, I use more than that and for a good reason. 90% of the time I PVM, I manually trigger my ultimates and thresholds, but let revolution trigger my auto attacks. I still leave my bar set up in this fashion so that I can turn on the auto triggerings for all abilities when doing AFK tasks like Krill or Slayer mobs. This may be a big surprise to new PVMers. Each combat style has similar abilities. An example I have is Tsunami, Incendiary Shot, and Meteor Strike. All three of these are ultimate AoE abilities. This means if I put each of these abilities in the same spot on the revolution bar and give that spot a keybind, all three of those abilities have the same keybind, regardless of my attack style. I use this to have the same setup for my abilities no matter what combat style I'm using. Even though the ultimates are on the left and come first, I want to talk about the basic abilities first. I learned a lot about DPS rotations from Junsong, who's a great PVMer and YouTuber. Taking what he teaches, I put in order the way I want my basic abilities to queue in Revolution. You may have noticed that they have keybinds. I do recommend keybinding your basic abilities as well, even though most of the time Revolution will queue them for you. I'm not very good at full manual, but I have practiced a bit, and I do find it very useful against Legion since you're constantly moving. To make things easier for myself, I decided to use the left side of the keyboard to make my home row for my basic abilities. The A, S, D, and F keys are where my fingers rest when not triggering anything. My first three basic abilities are F, D, and S, while the next three are R, E, and W. Much later, I found out how great it is to have a stunning ability off cooldown to use whenever. So at the end of my revolution bar, but not within the yellow box, is the basic stunning ability set to Q. This works well with having the stun punishers at the end of the revolution bar, since they will always be off cooldown after triggering the stunning ability. I found this setup to be a nice easy start and haven't deviated much from this. Next are my ultimates and thresholds. Instead of putting these abilities on keys around my home keys, I decided to keep them here, but require the use of the shift key. This was very, very weird at first, since you have one hand on the mouse and one hand on the keyboard. When typing like normal, like how I'm typing my script for this video, you hold shift on the opposite side for the key that you want to make uppercase. I had to practice hitting these keys while holding shift with my pinky. I ran into a very annoying problem, which I'll explain later. I use my thresholds more than my ultimates, so I set those to F, D, and S. Then set my ultimates to R, E, and W. Remember that all these are with the shift added. A very recent addition to this revolution bar setup was adding the tendrils ability outside of the yellow box. This threshold can deal an enormous amount of damage when used with damage boosting ultimates. I don't like to use them outside of that though. I haven't set a keybind yet and have been manually clicking them instead. I might set a keybind, I might not. I'll play around with it and see what happens. And this is how I have all my combat type abilities keybound and used. 
You may not like this method, and I suggest trying other ways just to see what you like. Another method that I've seen is not using so many keybinds. Having all the ability interfaces pulled up and manually clicking the thresholds and ultimates instead. I have not tried this method as I am afraid of misclicking or things like that, but many PVMers use this method instead of ridiculous amount of keybinds. Make sure you set up your action bars to auto switch depending on your combat style. You can do this by going to settings, combat, and action bar binding. First select the combat style, then select primary action bar for all of them, and then select which action bar number for the combat style. In my previous action bar videos, we talked about having a secondary bar below the revolution bar called the utility bar. I showed you this method because it's a great place to start and keep your interface clean while utilizing keybinds on a bar that isn't limited in space due to your revolution bar. This is where I started when I first started learning PVM. I don't know if I told you guys yet, but the first boss I learned was Rax. I didn't learn QBD or God Wars 1 or God Wars 2 before learning this boss. At the time, I wasn't maxed but high enough for tier 90 weapons and I wanted to fight racks to make them. I had my utility bar set up with all the necessities just to fight racks with range. I set keybinds for anticipation and freedom, my only two prayer switches, food, debilitate, and devotion. I didn't bring a shield bow because I didn't learn anything about defense switching until later. I also didn't have my revolution bar set up like how I taught you guys. I didn't have death swiftness unlocked, it was a rough start but I was still able to get consistent kills. When I started Rax, I was using my Logitech G502 mouse. This is much more than what most RuneScape players use, but it gave me access to put keybinds on the mouse to free up the other hand. If I remember correctly, I had anticipation and freedom on the DPI switch buttons, my two prayer switches on the two main thumb buttons, and I'm pretty sure my sniper button was set to food. This is what I started with and works if Rax is the only boss you're going to fight. If I wanted to fight any other boss, I would have to change everything just to fit that boss. I wanted to develop a setup and key binds that I could take to any boss which started me on my quest that you all are taking by watching this video. The video that sticks out the most to me was June Song's interface video, which mine is set up in a very similar fashion. And to have this setup requires money. You need to unlock all additional action bars. I have a different action bar set up for each combat style for both dual wield and two handed. This takes up six bars out of 13. I also use a separate bar for each combat style to set weapon switches to, which takes up another three bars, totaling nine out of 13. And my next three bars, I will break down for you guys. I like having a bar set to defensive abilities. This means no matter what combat style I'm using, all of my defensive abilities are keybound and accessible. I have all these keybinds set to keys around my home keys, making them easy to hit but not in the way of hitting the main set of keys I use. The farther away from the home keys, the less used abilities are set. I also have some defensive abilities set to shift if they are similar in style or connected to each other, like resonance and preparation. The next bar I use is a constitution slash mobility bar. This is exactly what it sounds like. I have on here the most used constitution abilities, plus surge, escape, barge, and bladed dive. Before unlocking bladed dive, I had surge, barge, and escape set to A, shift A, and control A. After getting bladed dive, I unbound escape since I hardly use it, and switch barge and bladed dive depending on what's needed more. The last bar I have set up is my mouse keybinds bar. You can also see this as a prayers slash rings slash food bar. I had decided to invest in a Corsair Scimitar Pro Mouse. This gave me 12 buttons that I could use on my mouse for keybinds. I set the buttons to keys that I would never reach over and hit, and this is completely up to preference and budget. But I'm not gonna lie, this mouse has helped me a lot in PVM. I decided to have all abilities set to keybinds on the keyboard and any other keybinds on the mouse. The bottom row of buttons is set to prayer switches and shift allowed me to switch to tier 95 prayers. I have these two buttons set to food and serodome and bruise and shift allowed me to take food from my beast of burden via the left click option for familiars. These two buttons are for the ring of vigor and asylum surgeon's ring 
and shift allowed me to put on the ring of death if I brought one. I used to have my Luck of the Dwarves key bound, but after the Throne to Miscellanea quest, this ring's left click option is to teleport away, which if you're already wearing it but don't realize and you hit the keybind to put it on, it'll teleport you away. Not a problem if you're fighting Rax, but any boss you can teleport away, this got very frustrating. Now I just manually click my Luck of the Dwarves near the end of the kill and the top row of buttons on the mouse is set to weapon and shield switches and the replenishment potion. Now about that problem with using shift and control. This is the problem that I ran into. I have all my prayers set to these buttons, and I noticed when I was fighting Rax that while triggering thresholds which require shift and trying to switch prayers during phase 4, I would accidentally switch or turn off my tier 95 prayers. I learned that you have to press the keys quickly but in this exact order. You press down shift or control, press the key needed, then release shift or control. Sounds easy, but when fighting racks became way too complicated, I figured I wouldn't need to switch my tier 95 prayers within a fight, so I removed the key binds and now just click them on and off. As for how my interface is set up on my screen, it's pretty simple. I wanted to make sure that all necessary things that need to be seen were close together. I have my buff and debuff bar here above health and prayer points. I also set the enemy target health to this area. I like these here instead of up in a corner since I can easily view my target and all my vitals very closely. Next to all my keybinds are my inventory and familiar interfaces. Pretty much anything I need to click is in this corner of the screen. You'll also want your chat interface close and easy to read because some boss mechanics come up in chat. It also lets you know when certain potions are almost out. The rest is preference, but not necessary. I like having the minimap in this corner with nothing else around it so that I can change the size to whatever is needed. And that about wraps up all my keybinds and interface setup. I did play around with different keys and settled on this. It did take a while to get used to, but that's really the key to keybinds. Set up what makes sense to you. No matter what your setup is, I guarantee it'll feel weird in the beginning. It takes practice and repetition to get used to the keybinds. I suggest practicing your setup on easy bosses like KBD or just Slayer Mob so you don't have the risk of dying. Let me know down below in the comments your thoughts on how my setup is and how you plan to tackle creating your keybinds and interface. Next week we'll be talking about weapon special attacks coming out next Friday. Make sure you all stay healthy, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.